Craig, want to raise your hand one more time? I'll start off with uh, Greg Engel. Hey, gents. Um, so can the view. Greg Engel, over here, Denny. Um, Forbes. Um, I'm going to talk to it. Hi, Kyle. I want to talk on a on a t your team owner side. How does an event like this coming to a market like this is is it an advantage for the 23 team in terms of marketing and helping you market? Can you take advantage of being out here and, and take advantage of some of those networking opportunities that may be available nowhere else? Well, typically the the clash in general is a hard race to sell uh, sponsorship uh, for. Uh, just in general, it's a very short race, uh, but certainly this one is as much build up as it has. Um, it, it, it enables you to, you know, put it on on the schedule as a legit race that, um, you know, you can you can sell for what you would sell for a, a normal uh, event. Uh, on the other side, the team ownership. I just want to know what it's going to cost for us to do this. That's that's really all I care about. Your 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 costs cannot out cannot exceed your expenses. No, the other way, your revenue. It costs a lot, <laughs> it costs a lot. It costs the same. So, you know, if the race pays less and your sponsor pays less, it makes less sense. Who's next? Go to Bob. Uh, Bob Hockers, Fox Sports. Denny, you were kind of looking at your car afterward you had a lot of scrapes on it on the right side. Uh, were you concerned or curious? And you know, how did this car react when, you, when it hit the wall versus the others? Uh, it was similar. It didn't stick to the wall uh, quite as much, um, you know. But it really looked like they just could repair some decals uh, on it. It you know they didn't didn't have to beat anything out. So it, it seems like obviously the material that we're using that's just similar to the um, Serenity car. You, you won't. You know, you'll be able to rub it a little bit more than uh, the normal, for sure. We'll go to uh, Jeff. Yeah, what do you what do you guys think of this so far? I mean, what do you think of the the setting, the event, and everything like that? I mean, I think it's all good. It's been fun so far. Um, you know, definitely different and interesting, with the uh, ability of what we're all trying to accomplish and do here and put on a really good show, put on a really good race. I think that there's an opportunity. So um, with as much, as Denny said, with as much hype and everything that's kind of built into this event, let's make it one, you know? So um, keep it going. So far, so good. Keep it going. We'll go to, uh, we'll go to Zach and Reed. Zach Sterniola with Front Stretch. Guys, uh, you both are uh, involved with a lot of grassroots racing. Um, you guys are you have a garage in a parking lot right now and you guys are walk, driving on uh the streets to get back and forth to the racetrack at this point um do you guys get that <coughs> excuse me uh sort of grassroots feel despite how big this event is and, and how this is moving the sport forward uh is grassroots a good thing i mean do f1 cars run through gravel street roads to get to the, the track no um i yeah, I, I'm probably a little different than what you know, the general public thinks that, like, let's get back to the roots of, you know, when it was much, much smaller sport. Uh, I think you got to continue to grow and you got to continue to make the fan and the uh, competitors experience better and better. That's that's to me how you grow is you want to have a, a place where, um, you know, parking's good, traffic flows good, great amenities, great place to, you know, get a drink or food quickly at a racetrack. All those things are very underrated in our sport and the growth of it. Reed, you can just holler out your question. Kyle, you were, you were first to win the COC. You were first to get Toyota's win in Atlanta in 2008. Uh, is there any extra incentive to be the first to win in the new car? How did you get involved with it? Um, I would say no, but uh, of course, in the back of my mind, you would say, yeah, uh, you, you want to be the, the first guy. but. Um, I think many of us would argue that the, the first race for this vehicle will be the Daytona 500. Um, you know, we're, we're here, obviously it is a race. Yes, there will pay somebody at the end of the day to win it. Um, but the, you know, this is more as we've kind of alluded a little bit where it's, it, it's a show. I mean, it, and that's, that's fine. And, and we're going to do our best job of being able to put on a good show. There's going to be a race involved. 
there's going to be a checker flag at the end of it. And, um, you know, I've been, in, I've been involved in this sport enough where I, there's a lot of asterisks on the things that I accomplished. So I'm sure me winning this race, I did not win the first race with the new car. It would be whoever wins Daytona. That's how it would go. So We'll go to Jerry, then Jenna, then Bob. Jerry Jordan kicking the tire side net. Along those lines, are you guys glad to be done with the offseason and moving forward and, and, and heading to Daytona next weekend and, and to get this season underway? As a driver, yes. Uh, you know, I'm excited. You know, our, our all season is always very short uh, when you consider. I mean, we get a couple weeks in November. You, you, you know, I personally, I get December and then start of the turn of the new year. We're, we're meeting with you guys and doing uh, production days and whatnot. So it's really, you know, kind of uh, about a seven week window where, where we have off as a team. I wish we had a few more weeks. Um, you know, there's there's general and real concern over, um, you know, part supplies for cars. And so uh, I just wish we had you know a little bit more time uh, to, to prepare for on that front. Uh, I know our team uh, loaded up um, like 245 in the morning or, or something. So it's just uh, the, the hours on the guys is, is what's tough right now. And so if we had more time, then we wouldn't have to push them so hard. What was the question? Yeah, I mean, not being on the ownership side in the Cup Series, I don't feel the, the stress that these guys do. Uh, so being a driver, I'm like, what are you all waiting for? Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's nice to – have a few off weeks, get a few chances to kind of chill out and, um, you know, relax a little bit. And then once it's time to get going, like Denny said, it's pretty much January that, that you start your year with uh, production shoots, video shoots, media stuff, whatever it might be, uh, to then get set for the year and, and starting here in L.A. And then um, one week, I guess, off again to uh, start our season for real in Daytona. Go Jenna, Bob, and wrap with Lewis. Uh, when, when Denny won the clash as a rookie, the Atlanta newspaper wrote, Denny, who did what? And it sort of was a big deal, like that winning the clash was still a really big thing. Um, and I think maybe uh, maybe you guys disagree that that kind of diluted a little bit over the last few years. Does it being here make the clash special again? And is this like, despite the asterisk you would receive if you won it, is it worth it to, to go all out and try to win this race again? I think so. I mean, I... Things get diluted for for a lot of different reasons. Uh, back then, you had to, I think you you had to get a pole. I mean that that was the only way you get in. And and over time, um, you know, if enough teams complain that they are not a part of it, they you know rules get changed to make it to where more people can be included. Um, well, anytime you do that, you dilute it. It's not as special. It's no different than the, our playoffs that have gone from 10 to 12 to 16. You know, it's you know making the Making the playoffs, I remember in 06, 07, I mean, it was, it was hard. And and you had, you know, some legit guys um, that could win each and every week, like, not make the playoffs. And, and But that would that made the, the 10 real, really, really special. But as you dilute it a little bit more, it certainly is, is not as special. This format, certainly where you have to get in on your own merit, there's, there's only one provisional, um, there's no uh, – you know, inclusion for someone that's got high and this or that, it's this, yeah, it's back to being, in my opinion, um, you know, it's, it's going to be the best 23 cars on the racetrack, or, or the best 20 cars this, this weekend anyway. So certainly in my mind it makes it more prestigious than just getting in on one of the 10 things that you can get in on. Bob? Compared to what you thought, the car might practice like how, how did it practice i mean was it much different than what you thought was there anything that really surprised you in that practice um i think lap times were a little bit quicker than many of us expected um or anticipated the driving of the car was about as much as i'd expect it to be you know i think some of the issue is just brakes on entry you know making sure you can slow down fast enough for the tight confines to be able to make the turn that you have. Um, the acceleration to me was better than I had anticipated. Um, you know, better forward drive out of the turn, so not as much wheel spin as I'd expected, but um, the, the tight confines was <laughs> when I got 
into practice a little bit and had some cars in front of me and around me and stuff like that, it definitely was like, oh, okay, it's it's tight. Like, how are you going to find a way to pass? You know, some guys kind of holding and protecting it low. You know, the only way to get them out of the way is push them out of the way. So I think that you're going to see some of that as it comes down towards um, some opportune times when uh, more is on the line. From my standpoint, I, I, I thought the car turned the corner just better than I, I thought. I mean, I, I think there was no way our old car was going to make it around these corners. But this one, um, you know, we talked about how it's better for road course racing. Uh, this corners, uh, these corners are very, very tight, tighter than anything that we have. Um, and it and it cornered you know quite a bit better than what I was anticipating. But other than that, everything was the same. Lewis, uh, Denny, you brought up the the topic of cost. The the old clash resulted in some severely torn up cars. And while there might be some damage here, uh, do you sleep better at night knowing that your cost will be low, especially in view of these are new cars? Yeah, I mean certainly. I mean I if you like really crash one, I think here you're. You know, probably looking at 50 grand worth of stuff. I mean, it, I, you know, that's our guess. But um, yes, it's not a total loss like a, a Daytona clash would be. Kyle, Denny, thank you for your time. Good luck thank tonight you. and tomorrow. Okay, we are now joined by the driver of the number